Hello, thanks so much for joining us. Today we celebrate Pentecost. The word Pentecost actually means 50. Pentecost in the days before Jesus walked on the earth was a harvest festival that took place after 50 days. Pentecost also takes place today, 50 days after Easter, counting the day of Easter and this day of Pentecost. And Pentecost in the Old Testament was a harvest festival of bringing in grain and grapes and other crops. Today we celebrate Pentecost as a harvest of souls, as 3,000 people were brought to faith in Jesus and baptized in one day. Who did that? The Holy Spirit. How did he do it? Through God's Word. And the Holy Spirit continues to do that today. He continues to bring in a harvest of souls using God's Word to bring people to faith in Jesus. Thanks for joining us. We pray your faith in Jesus will be built up as you enjoy this service today. We'll begin with the opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner.
God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, God and Lord, come to us this joyful day with your sevenfold gift of grace. Rekindle in our hearts the holy fire of your love, that in a true and living faith we may tell abroad the glory of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Father, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson for our service comes from the prophecy of the prophet Joel. Chapter 2, starting at verse 28, we'll see through his prophet how God foretells the coming of the Holy Spirit, which he will send to his people. We read, And afterward, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. This is the word of the Lord. We'll join now together to sing Psalm 51. sacrifice or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Renew a 
steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence, or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will turn back to you. Our second lesson for our service comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, where we see the words of the prophet Joel, which we just heard moments before, gloriously fulfilled in signs and wonders from God when he sends his Holy Spirit to his faithful people on Pentecost. We read, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Dear friends, out of joy for hearing the words of our Savior and respect for his gospel, I invite you to please stand. Alleluia! Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia! The Gospel according to John, chapter 15. Hear now the words of our Savior from John 15, starting at verse 26. 
When the Counselor comes, the one I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who proceeds from the Father, He will testify about me. You also will testify because you have been with me from the beginning. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess the faith with Christians throughout history and across the world in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Friends, please be seated for our next hymn.
God's love and his peace are yours through the Holy Spirit, the Counselor, who testifies to Jesus. Amen. George Calhoun. Know the name? George Calhoun? Uh, before you race around in your pocket to get your phone and try to Google and find out, maybe if I give you another name, you'll make a connection. Curly Lambeau. Now, my guess is you're familiar with the second name, but not so much the first. D did you know that both Curly Lambeau and George Calhoun were the co-founders of the Green Bay Packers? That's right, co-founders. There would not be the Green Bay Packers without George Calhoun. He promoted the team. He wrote about the team in the Green Bay newspaper. He literally passed the hat at early games to take up collections so the team could keep going. And he networked with other reporters from other cities so that Green Bay would get publicity and stay on the map and stay in the National Football League. Now I know, many of you watching would be happy if there were no Green Bay Packers, there had been no George Calhoun. And let me be clear that we're not comparing the Green Bay Packers to God. And yet there is this similarity. George Calhoun is happy if you forget his name, as long as you remember the more important names, Curly Lambeau, Green Bay Packers, just as the Holy Spirit is okay if you forget his name, as long as you don't forget the more important name, Jesus. The Holy Spirit testifies to Jesus. The Holy Spirit is the one who brought us to faith in Jesus. The Holy Spirit is the one who continues to build up our faith in Jesus. The Holy Spirit's role is not to draw attention to himself, but to draw attention to Jesus. So even on this day of Pentecost, when we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit and the full outpouring of the Spirit, this is still a day about Jesus. The Holy Spirit, the Counselor, continues to testify about Jesus. Jesus gave the Holy Spirit this special title, Counselor, with a capital C. And that word Counselor has a wide range and, and many ways to look at it, like you see a diamond from many angles. So this term Counselor has many angles. It means helper, uh, advocate, encourager. Now, we could preach three whole sermons on each one of those. Don't worry, we won't do that today. But we will take a little time to look at each one of those angles. Helper, advocate, encourager. Let's start with the first one, helper. We need help. One job loss, and we quickly go from faith to fear. One family loss, and we think God has forgotten about us. One virus comes across our country and we think we are without help. It, it shows us that faith is not our natural condition, fear is. Or we go to the other extreme, to foolishness, and look down on others who do not have the great faith that I have and are not so sure about their love for Jesus as I am. Faith is not our natural condition, tripping into temptation is. And the Holy Spirit helps us by pointing us to Jesus, by testifying about Jesus, by showing that Jesus is the only one who gives the help that we need the most, the forgiveness of our sins. Only Jesus died to forgive our sins. Only Jesus rose from the dead as the first to rise from the dead to give us sure and certain eternal life. He is our helper. The first job of that counselor, be our helper and then be our advocate. The idea of advocate is someone who stands up and pleads your case in court. Uh, if we picture the courtroom scene before God, it does not start as a pleasant one. The prosecutor or the accuser, that's actually what the name Satan means, accuser, stands up and he has piles of evidence of our sin. All the times we have broken God's law and violated our relationship with him. And after he keeps presenting case after case, the judge finally says, okay, that's enough. We get it. But before the judge renders the verdict, your defense dream team stands up. Actually, both of them advocates, both of them holy, both of them totally on your side. 
your first advocate stands up and says, Your Honor, look at my hands. See the nail marks? I already paid for those crimes. And then he points to an empty tomb, rock-solid evidence that not even the devil can refute or object to. And this advocate says, Your Honor, I gave eternal life. And then your other advocate stands up and he says, Father, he addresses the judge as Father, think these guys are in cahoots and they're all working together. He says, but Father, we washed away her sins. We placed our name on her in holy baptism. Can you still see that sign of the cross on head and heart marking this defendant as our child? There's no other verdict for the judge to give. He bangs the gavel down, not guilty. And, and the verdict rings through the ages, not guilty. And your heart is uplifted, not guilty. And the devil has to walk away defeated, not guilty. Feel encouraged by that advocate? Not guilty. Feel built up? Right? When troubles come in our life, that's when this counselor, capital C, is our encourager. God has not forgotten about us. The only thing God can forget is our sins. God is not getting back at us or our nation or punishing us. He's helping us to see this world is temporary. And he encourages us to lift our eyes beyond the troubles of this world so we take heart because he has overcome the world. Right? Who is this counselor, capital C? He's our helper, our advocate, our encourager. And look at what he uses to help and advocate and encourage the truth. Jesus clearly says the Holy Spirit is the spirit of the truth. I know if you look back in your service folder, you won't see the word the there before truth, but it's there in the original language. And it's very significant because the, the Spirit can never work through lies. He never works through any false teaching. The Spirit uses the truth, the one and only truth. The, the Spirit does not testify to a truth, and maybe you can find a truth that works for you, but the Spirit uses the one and only truth. Jesus himself said, I am the way and the truth. The Spirit uses the truth which he has put down in his word. And he continues to use that very same word. We see that very clearly on this day of Pentecost, right? In, in our second lesson, the Holy Spirit did amazing acts of power, uh, strange things that got people's attention. But well, what did those amazing acts of power do? Well, they made some people critical. Right? Hey, these guys must be drunk. How are they able to speak in these foreign languages? They made some people curious. Hmm. How are these guys able to tell me about God in my own language? But what converted people? What changed people's hearts? It wasn't the wind or the languages or the tongues of fire that sat on their heads. It was the word. What changed hearts? It was an ordinary guy with tons of skeletons in his closet who stood up and encouraged by the encourager, he spoke up. And speaking the holy word of God, he closed mouths up to have no objection and the spirit used the word to open hearts up to believe that message. 3,000 people brought to faith in one day by a sermon, a boring old sermon. Week after week, the Spirit continues to use the Word. Boring old sermons to bring people to faith. The Spirit continues to use the Word, God's Word, the truth, to keep hearts in that faith. The Spirit continues to use the word to testify to Jesus. Right? Notice how Jesus said that the Spirit will testify about me and then you will testify about Jesus. Well, let's look at that word testify a little bit more. 
Okay, the, the word testify is where we get our word martyr from. A martyr is someone who would rather die than change his story. A martyr is someone who would give up his life rather than give up his testimony. Right? And notice Jesus didn't say, well, you should testify like there's some guilt if you don't, or you might testify. No, he says very clearly, you will testify. Just as the Spirit testified about me, so you will testify about me. Now, how do we do that? Well, how about if we adopt the method that the Holy Spirit used to testify? Right? He, he did some strange things that got attention, but he only changed hearts with the Word. Maybe I, I can give you an example of something that happened to me not too long ago. Uh, we were blessed to get a new roof on the house that God graciously gave to us. And after the project was done, uh, there were some extra bundles of shingles that were sitting on the lawn that the roofing company was going to pick up. Our neighbor saw him. He texted me. He said, hey, Nate, uh, could I buy a few of those uh, shingles from you because I'm looking to build a little shed in my backyard. And my first reaction should have been, sure, Luke, you can just have the shingles for free. Sadly, that wasn't my first reaction. It was to talk to him and, you know, maybe we're going to figure out a price or how it's going to work out, but I'm thankful that over the next couple days the, the Spirit worked on me and I said, Luke, just have the shingles for free. Okay, now, free shingles aren't going to get anybody to heaven. God's free love gets people to heaven. But can that odd little thing of giving free shingles be an opportunity to get someone to hear the word? I've been sharing these videos with my neighbor, and uh, he's watched some of the devotions we've been putting on YouTube. Because finally, it's only the word that the Spirit uses to change hearts. Sorry if that was kind of a long story to make this point. You don't have to stand up in front of 3,000 people and preach a long sermon to testify. Maybe an odd little act of love, like free shingles or calling a neighbor who's lonely or dropping off some groceries for someone who can't get out. Maybe that strange act of love will be your opportunity to share the greater love that we find in the Word. You know, there was something extraordinary that stood out about the first people who testified to Jesus. A couple guys named Peter and John. It says, when they were testifying about Jesus, people took note of something about them. You can read about it in the book of Acts, in the Bible, chapter 4, verse uh, 13. It says they were ordinary men. Nothing stood out about them. They didn't have any special schooling. But what made them extraordinary? They had been with Jesus. And because they had been with Jesus, they were able to testify. I'm guessing that many of you have also been with Jesus. Maybe from the very beginning of your lives. And it's that being with Jesus that gives you the power to testify. It's that time spent with Jesus that makes you someone extraordinary. It's that time spent with Jesus that rises above any schooling you may have had or may not have. It's that time spent with Jesus that gives you the strength to testify. Just as the counselor testifies to Jesus, so you testify to Jesus, to this good news, so that Jesus is never forgotten, this good news. Jesus lived, and Jesus died, and Jesus rose. That's the good news to which we testify. Amen. The Holy Spirit still continues to testify. He still is the counselor. Amen. We'll now join in singing the song, Create in Me.
Let us pray. Holy Spirit of God, we worship and glorify you as the Lord and giver of all spiritual life. By our own thinking and choosing, we would still be lost in our sins, wandering in spiritual darkness toward eternal death. Only by your gift of faith do we now confess that Jesus Christ is our Lord. Only by your enlightenment do we know the loving heart of our Father in heaven and his promise of eternal life in Christ. With the Father and the Son, you are one God, one Lord. We thank you for fulfilling the word you gave by the prophets and the promise spoken by our Lord Jesus Christ. You came down on the day of Pentecost to guide and comfort the apostles to lead them into all truth, and to reveal your plan to save us. Extend your church throughout the world by the words we speak and the messengers we send. We praise you for calling us by the gospel and making us sons and daughters of God by faith in Christ Jesus. By baptism, you clothed us in his righteousness. You gathered us into his flock, the one holy Christian church where we hear the shepherd's voice proclaiming the forgiveness of all our sins. Live in us, Holy Spirit, and warm our hearts with the fire of your love. Amen. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. We'll end our service today with our closing hymn.
Thanks for joining us. Glad you could worship with us. Pray you'll be built up to testify to the good news about Jesus Christ. Thanks. Thanks.